Hello, my name is Jonathan Martin. I am a physician. Um, I practice trauma critical care surgery at Stony Brook University Hospital. And a verse that came to mind and went with an experience I had is from the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 20. It says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. When I was a kid and I first read that verse, it didn't quite make a lot of sense to me. And as I got older, there was a passage from the book Education that helped clear things up for me. In the book Education, speaking of Jesus and his ministry, Ellen White wrote, In every human being, he discerned infinite possibilities. He saw men as they might be, transfigured by his grace, in the beauty of the Lord our God. Looking upon them with hope, he inspired hope. Meeting them with confidence, he inspired trust. In many a heart that seemed dead to all things holy were awakened new impulses. To many a despairing one, there opened the possibility of a new life. You see, when Jesus saw unpromising things, he did not give up on people. Just like a broken plant with a bent leaf, he didn't give up on that and tear it out. He gave it a chance to grow. With a flickering candle, so long as there was that potential spark in it to rekindle a flame, he didn't snuff it out. He gave it a chance. Sometimes in our career, um, we encounter unpromising situations, things that we can't fix. Sometimes we think, how should we minister spiritually to our patients and our colleagues? And it seems that there's no possibility. As a trauma critical care surgeon, I deal with many sometimes hopeless situations. Um, many of them involve our older patients. They take a fall, they develop dementia, um, and it's just a very sad situation. I learned a lesson that you really cannot discount any of these situations, um, particularly uh, to reach out to someone and minister to their soul. One afternoon, um, I got a consult from my resident. Old person had fallen at their nursing facility, presented to our hospital to evaluate for any traumatic injury. Um, we get many of these every day, and my job is to make sure there's nothing broken and there's nothing for us to fix. And sure enough, imaging showed nothing wrong with the man. Chronic uh, degenerative changes, nothing to do. My resident told me we should just sign off and go away. I said, probably true, but I need to still go down and see the patient. So I went down, met the gentleman, examined him and confirmed my resident's findings that yes, there is nothing acutely injured. He took a fall. From our perspective, he can go back to his facility. But um, as I examined and talked with the patient, I could just see he was just very anxious and very sad. And they told me that this man has dementia, doesn't really know what's going on. I said, you know, the least I can do is at least try to brighten his day and point out positive things. So I told him, sir, the good news is you don't have anything broken. You can go back to your facility. And instead of making him happy, it actually made him sadder. And, well, what's wrong? He's like, oh, you don't understand the people there. They're not normal people. You can't talk with them. It's terrible. I was like, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And so my next thing to try to encourage him is like, well, do you have any family? And instead of making matters better, it actually made matters worse. He said, oh, I have wonderful kids. They're, you know, wonderful grandkids. And they come to visit me, but they can't take care of me. And I have to sacrifice being with them to stay in this nursing facility and just let life pass me by. And it just got more and more depressing as he listened to this man, as he despaired about what he had lived, what he had strived to accomplish, and where he was now. And it quickly dawned on me, if this man had any dementia, it, it didn't matter. He had enough insight to understand that things were not right. And at that moment, he was just getting more sad, more anxious, and just crying, crying out in agony. He's like, Doc, is there anything that you can do to help me? Please, if there is, do it. And at that moment, I was like, you know, I can't, in my head, there is nothing that I can physically fix on this man. I cannot physically take him out of his facility and give him a new life. 
but I can at least try to find out why is he so sad about things. So I asked him, sir, is there any, you know, do you have any particular faith background? Is this any, uh, you know, this prayer helpful for you? And he told me, he's like, you know, I grew up in the faith, um, tried to raise my kids in the Christian way, but as time went on, I just couldn't grasp how God could allow certain things to happen, how I could still believe in him. And he then told me, I just, I would like to believe, I just don't know how. And at that moment, I asked him, would you find it helpful if we prayed together? And he said, yes. And I prayed with him. I told, explained to him, like, listen, you know who Jesus is. He promised to give us peace, peace that the world cannot give, peace that the world cannot take away. He just asked us to believe and accept it. And as we talked and prayed, I noticed that he actually was becoming more calm. He was not as agitated anymore. And finally was calm. He thanked me for taking time with him. And I walked away from that situation. I don't know what happened to this gentleman. I, I understand the emergency department will evaluate him to move back to his facility and whatnot. But it taught me that, again, you can never discount an older person with the label of dementia or whatnot. It may seem like a bruised, broken reed. It may seem like a flame about to go out. But these people do have feelings. They do have spiritual needs. And it's our opportunity to minister to them. My challenge to you and a challenge to myself is to continue to look at our patients, at our colleagues, at our friends with God's eyes. To not view them as broken plants that just need to be torn up or candles that are ready to be snuffed out. Let's pray together and ask God for help. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much for giving us your example, how you value the least of these, and how if there's any hope of anyone's salvation, you still bear long with us and with them. I pray, Lord, that as we look at our ministry, as we look at our patients and those around us, that you give us your eyes, that you'd fill us with your love, and that you give us your words to speak and encourage them, that they too may be able to experience the peace that only you can provide. Thank you so much for giving us the privilege to work with you, Lord. For all these things we ask in the name of Jesus, and thank you. Amen.